Good evening. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News. Town of Silverthorne is reviewing a transportation wish list right now at Council Chambers, including the big one, fixing exit 205. The town estimates new on and off ramps there will cost upwards of $30 million, plus more, depending on CDOT. Another solution for exit 205 is a bridge over the Blue River connecting Adams Avenue to Stevens Way. Cost there is $10 million. Both projects are considered immediate need. The EPA says Frisco drinking water is tainted with forever chemicals, and the town is responding, calling a recent letter to residents incomplete, alarming, and clumsy. New EPA rules are cracking down on forever chemicals, saying if they show up in drinking water, more than one part per trillion, that water is unsafe. Frisco's forever chemicals traced back to one well. The town has closed that well, saying it will not reopen it until it's treated sometime next summer. These chemicals are also present in Dillon, Dillon Valley, East Dillon, and Silverthorne, not present in Breckenridge, Copper, and Keystone. Summit County Manager Scott Vargo is leaving the county for the city of Golden. After 24 years with the county, Vargo's last day on the job is September 12th. He replaced longtime manager Gary Martinez in 2016. The county is searching soon for a new manager. Frisco is close to hiring its third town manager in three years, and he is coming from the other Summit County. Tom Fisher, county manager for Summit County, Utah, is top candidate for the Frisco gig. Council makes the offer later this month. Town of Breckenridge is losing employees faster than ever. Since January, the town has lost 25 people, about 14% of its workforce. At this rate, the town could lose up to 27%. That's more than two times higher than in 2018 and 2020. This week on the State of Summit. A few years ago, it was we didn't have enough tax revenues to uh, run our services. And now we've got healthy tax revenues. We just don't have any drivers to uh, run the system. That was Kent Willis, chairman of the Summit Stage Board, explaining why the stage will not return to half-hour service anytime soon. School district, the ski areas, everybody's looking for drivers and uh, they're just not out there. Willis was talking to Frisco Council just minutes after Council was tackling the same question. Councilman Andrew Aronson. Let's say we have 500 flower pots and next summer we can only have 200 flower pots because we don't have the staff. Instead of pretending like we're gonna hire 10 flower attendants, we're not gonna get 10, we're only gonna have five. Like many employers countywide, Frisco is hurting for labor. And Councilman Andy Held believes cutting services will be the answer. Is everybody in every department working, uh, you know, a job and a half? We want to be able to work at a sustainable level where people can be happy and can enjoy their job. At Summit Stage, Willis says the top priority will be getting back to half-hour service, but it means another 15 to 20 full-time drivers plus mechanics, and demand is staggering. Copper Mountain and Keystone have been on road trips to go to various locations to try and find employees. And what they find is that everybody else is there too, doing the same thing. One thing could give Summit Stage the edge, guaranteed housing in Frisco and soon to come housing at Dillon Valley. Tune in again next week for The State of Summit on Crystal 93. Local fire danger remains moderate today with no fire restrictions in Summit. In sports, the Rockies play the Padres tonight at 640. And in local sports, brought to you by Red Mountain Autos. At their new location on Airport Road, leaving the start line in about 45 minutes, are riders on the brand new Swan River Rampage Mountain Bike Race. They're riding out of good times on Tiger Road to the Colorado Trail, Westridge, Muggins Gulch, and others. On-site registration is closed. Go cheer them on. Phil Lindemann, Crystal, 93 News.